Hey, this is Kenji. I'm uh, still at Worst Hall. I just finished cooking uh, some, I don't know, we packed up how many meals today? 140 meals that we're going to be delivering tomorrow. So um, make sure you check out the description below for what we're packing these meals for. It's a good cause um, and I hopefully, I'm hoping you'll support us with it. Anyhow, what I'm cooking today is a Korean dish, tukboki. Um Tukboki, tukboki. I think tukboki, tuk. I think I'm saying that right. Tukboki. It sounds like um, my daughter plays this game in the bathtub called Duck Bucket, where we take rubber ducks and we throw them in a bucket. Um, and I think of that every time I say duck bucky. Um, anyhow, it's a dish of Korean rice cakes uh, that are simmered in a, uh, a chili broth. There's a lot of ways to do this. You know, this is sort of classic Korean home cooking comfort food. Um, my, I, had a, I had a Korean girlfriend in college um, who introduced this to me. But it's a yeah, classic comfort food. Very simple to make. Um, there's a few different ways you can do it. I'm gonna so I'm gonna have I'm gonna do it with uh, some scallions, which I'm just roughly chopping. You really don't have to be precise at all. You don't want those kind of nasty ends if your if your scallion ends are nasty. My scallion ends are, ends are a little bit nasty. So the simplest way you can do it is uh, just just with these Korean rice cakes that you simmer with uh, gochujang, which is this Korean um, fermented chili and wheat paste. So it's a little bit sweet, a little bit salt, a little bit spicy, a little salty. Um, rice cakes, these come, you can buy them refrigerated or you can buy them frozen. Generally the refrigerated kind are a little better um, and they come in a few different shapes. These are the sort of like inch and a half cylinders. Um, they also come kind of like um, diagonally cut coins. Uh, Traditionally, you would use these for this dish, but it really doesn't matter which ones you use. Um, other things you could add, I'm gonna go with a little bit of this um, pancetta that, oh, say it with me, this is my sous chef Eric's pancetta. Um, if you don't have a sous chef Eric, uh, you can use regular bacon, um, or you don't have to use any pork product at all. Typically, you wouldn't even use a pork product. I just happen to have this here, and I enjoy it, so uh, I'm gonna use it. Um, actually, this isn't. This is not pancetta. This is a maple cured pork belly. So it's a little bit, a little bit sweet and a little bit more similar to uh, like an American style sweet bacon than say an Italian pancetta, which um, I think actually goes better with this dish. Um, you want a little bit of sweetness in there. Let's separate those guys out a little bit. You don't have to do this in a wok either. It's not really a stir fried dish. It's a simmered dish, so you could do it in a saucepan. You can do it in a skillet. Um, I just happen to have this wok here, so I'm going to use it. Um, I'm also going to use these um, chive flowers that I got from uh, the marina market, the uh, Chinese market today. Um, I really like these guys. They're, they're great for stir frying. Uh, they're great in simmered dishes like this. And what's really great about them is that they, they last a really long time. Like you can... Uh... Sorry. This guy's a little bit hotter than... Uh... What I cook with at home, so sometimes I forget. You know, this is a home style dish, so I'm expecting a home style range. It's a little bit, too, a little bit hotter. Yeah, that's fine. Um, you know, scallions tend to like kind of go, start to go off after, you know, maybe a few days, a week, or a couple weeks max. These guys will last like in, in pack, in this wrapped in plastic or in an air airtight container, they'll last for like weeks and weeks and weeks, which is nice, because then you always have like a, fresh supply of some kind of green oniony thing to add to your stir fries and, and soups. Um, there's that. I'm gonna do a little bit of garlic. I pulled up four cloves, but I'm probably gonna use a couple of them. Let's go with two. I'm gonna whack the crap out of this one. For this we're going for not like a super, super fine mince, but a mince nonetheless. I can't tell if this whole thing is, if I'm recording sideways. I think I'm recording sideways. Like, let me, let me stop this video and restart it to see. Hold on a second. Or let me just, let me just look at my forehead and check. No, nope, we're going right way. Sorry about that. All right. So we got all that going on. Bacon's rendered out. A little crispy. 
Now I'm gonna add some uh, water to here. Now you could do, you could do, um, typically you would do an anchovy stock, um, but I don't have an anchovy stock, so I'm just gonna do water. Add some water. A little bit of sugar. And get that garlic in here. And I'm gonna get my rice sticks. Little handfuls of those. Save those these for later. Um, and then we get our gochujang. Medicine, if you saw my video for making, uh, where I made some um, spätzle with um, with uh, gochujang and kimchi, that was uh, a variation of this dish actually. So that was basically this dish, but with with uh, spätzle instead of um, instead of the rice cakes. Um, and to that, I also added kimchi. You could definitely add kimchi here. That would be totally appropriate and totally delicious. Um, these just take a little bit longer to simmer than the spätzle does. These take about eight to ten minutes or so. Um, so we're gonna let those go for a bit. Let me wipe this up here. I'm at a. I'm at my restaurant, so I can use these little nice ramekins and stuff for my mise en place because uh, we have, you know, the big industrial dishwasher that makes it really easy to do dishes. I really want to get one of those at home, but um, it might be overkill. Uh, I'm also going to do a little bit of green cabbage. We got a ton of green cabbage in here because, well, we're a German restaurant and we make a lot of sauerkraut, so we always have a lot of cabbage hanging around. Um, we'll make, make sauerkraut out of the rest of that. Um, this I'm just going to kind of very roughly slice. All right, this will all go in a little bit later and simmer. Um, meanwhile, I'm gonna pour a beer. Oh, sorry, one more ingredient I'm gonna get in there. Which is these, um, gochugaru, it's um, the Korean chili flake. Um, it's actually not that spicy. Korean food in general is not that hot compared to, I don't know, other spicy cuisines, other, you know, like, Thai food or Chinese food or any of some other Asian cuisines. Um, Korean food is generally not that spicy, even even the spicy stuff. Um, so so gochugaru has like a very nice, sweet, peppery, mm, it smells really good, like a roasty aroma. Um, it's not gonna give you a ton of heat though, even if you had a lot of it. I'm gonna go with a, I'm gonna go with a good amount. A couple tablespoons, I'd say. Now we're just gonna let this kind of simmer down until it starts to thicken. Um, about half, in about maybe, I don't know, three or four minutes, I'm gonna add in that cabbage and those other uh, ingredients and let it finish cooking down. So three or four minutes from now, which would be, you know, like five minutes from, from when it started. Um, so that they'll simmer down for about, they'll simmer in the sauce for about three minutes um, while the rice sticks total will simmer for about you know, eight to 10 minutes until soft. But you got it. We use, this is what we use. So we do this uh, at the restaurant, we use a, um, we do a sort of our own version of Nashville style hot chicken, except we use Korean flavors in it. So we um, we double fry the chicken, um, and then oh, actually here it is. This is the this is the chicken spice blend. So it's um, gochugaru, um, cayenne, a couple other spices in there, black sesame. So it's gochugaru, but mo mainly, but but hotter because we had the cayenne. And what we do with this is we take um, hot oil from the fryer. This is a really uh, Typical way to make Nashville style hot chicken. Um, there's a little sugar in here too. You get a bowl of this, you get hot oil from the fryer, pour it over um, to bloom it, and you make this kind of chili oil. Um, and then when the chicken comes out of the fryer, um, you dunk it in the chili oil to coat. Um, and the nice thing about, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but but uh, oil, you can you can dunk a piece of chicken, like you could take a piece of fried chicken or anything fried really, and drop it in like a vat of oil, um, and it's not gonna get, um, uh, soggy. It won't get soggy. The oil, and when you when you drop fried things in oil, they don't they don't get soggy. They stay crispy. Um, so the chicken, you douse it in the oil, then we put it on a rack to drain, and then we douse it with the, then we uh, dust it with a ton more of this spice. It comes out really spicy um, and really nicely flavored. Flavored. Um, this stuff, especially when you toast it in the oil, it gets like really nice and toasty. Um, and those black sesame seeds. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze because I just 
And the pepper makes you sneeze. <gasps> Huh? Huh? No, I'm good. No, it's there. It's there. It's like, it's like one of those cartoons. I swear it's not coronavirus. It's just pepper up my nose. All right, I'm gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. What I need right now is like a bad guy I'm hiding from, so that because you you always sneeze when you when there's a bad guy you're hiding from, right? All right, that looks good. I'm gonna. Dump in these guys. I might need a little bit more water, actually. This is, I'm doing a real high ratio of um, vegetables to uh, to rice sticks here. Um, just because I feel like I could use some more vegetables in my life currently. Um, and I like, I like doing that. That's what I, I, come, I actually frequently do that with like fried rice or fried noodles. Um, I'll use a much higher ratio of vegetables, or even sometimes with pasta dishes, I'll use a higher ratio of vegetables to um, pasta or to noodles because, um, I don't know, because I like vegetables. You should think about it too. Think about how much you like vegetables and think about whether your pasta dishes and your, your carb dishes are in proportion to how much you like those vegetables. You may find you surprise yourself. Simmer, 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 simmer. All right, we're gonna get I think he's actually a little bit more water. Oh, you know what else I forgot in here? I'm gonna use a little bit of soy sauce. Um, I know I have some. I, know I got some in this fridge back here. Oh, I still haven't sneezed, but I can still feel it coming. Soy sauce. This is some of uh, sous chef Eric's fermented hot sauce. It's really good. And these are some of Sous Chef Eric's pickled red Fresno chilies, also really good. Soy sauce. Someday you can all meet Sous Chef Eric. Um, we've been talking about, well, things that he can do to keep himself busy during uh, this whole coronavirus thing um, since the restaurant is not operating uh, at normal capacity right now we're, we're only operating um, to, to make and produce and serve uh, free meals for well for hospitals and community centers around um, basically basically anyone who needs food right now because of the coronavirus where what we're doing is we're um, making boxes and delivering them every day so that's that's what I'm doing here each night um, well four nights a week that's what I'm doing here um, but sous chef Eric doesn't uh, doesn't have enough channels to um, let out his inner charcutiere, um, so he's been thinking about doing maybe an online class showing people how to make pancetta at home. Um, so maybe you'll learn how to make sous chef Eric's famous pancetta. Um, I don't know. Would you be interested in that? Let me know. Uh, write it in the comments, which are like down here. I don't. I can't see where I'm pointing. Yeah, down here. See below at the bottom of the screen, right there. All right. I'm gonna have a little drink while we finish that up. This is a uh, Weinstefano. It's a uh, Hefeweizen. I picked this beer because um, I think you know the the banana notes, banana and clove notes of a of a wheat beer of a Hefeweizen like this goes so well with um, chill. I mean, I picked it because it was it was what we had an open case of actually. Normally, I would go over to the taps and pull myself a Pliny. Um, that's my beer of choice. Typically, uh, Russian River Brewing Company. Um, they come from a little north of here. Um, here being San Mateo uh, and uh, California. Um, that's what I normally pull myself, but we've shut off all our taps because the restaurant is closed currently and we just emptied all the taps and the uh, beer fridge downstairs is not even on right now. So I, even if we hadn't emptied the taps, the beer would be warm. So unfortunately no tap fresh, fresh keg beer for me for a little while. I'm gonna have to deal with this nasty imported German stuff. For me. All right, this is pretty much done, I think. Let's take, let's give it a taste. Give it a taste. It's pretty good. It's actually a little sweeter than I want it. Shouldn't have added quite that much sugar. Some people like it quite sweet. Um, I typically don't like it too sweet. Could use a little, a little more soy sauce. How's that looking to you? 
It's looking pretty good to me. Mmm, it is good. Get myself a bowl. I'm not gonna eat all this. I'm gonna save this for, I don't know, I'll feed it to someone tomorrow. I'm not gonna eat all that much. Oh, and you know what? Let's just finish it off with a little bit of this uh, chicken spice. Make it a little bit hotter. Make it a little prettier. There we go. And that is a steaming hot bowl of duck bucket. Or duck bucket, duck bucket, duck bucket. Duck bucket. Duck bucket. Duck bucket. Korean comfort food from the 20th century, 1950s, I believe, post-World War II.